It is now time for member statements. I recognize the member for Beaches East York. Thank you, Speaker. In East End Toronto, there's a school whose students are mainly refugees and newcomers. Many of them come from conflict and have experienced a great deal of trauma. Their parents are working as hard as they can to learn English, find housing they can afford, and do whatever work they can to keep that roof over the family's heads. The kids are working as hard as they can to figure out what it means to be Canadian, help their parents out, and do well in school. They're still trying to cope with that trauma. Up until this year, that school had an extraordinarily talented a drama teacher. She had a background in equity studies and was uniquely able to provide a safe space for her students in her classes, help them work through the trauma, be a trusted adult in their lives, and help them decide what past is best. Best. That teacher learned this spring that she doesn't have a job at the school anymore. What you need to know is that whether or not she gets another job in another school, this school and its students have lost their drama teacher. It's a tragic loss for them as students and for all of us who care about how communities are built. On Friday, the TDSB learned that it is facing $42.1 million in funding cuts. That position isn't coming back. This story is playing out over and over across Ontario's with teachers, librarians and guidance counsellors gone, leaving holes in lives. It doesn't have to be this way, and it's just plain wrong. Thank you. Not here. Member statements, the member for Carleton. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Each year during the first week of May, Ontario recognizes the significant contribution of correctional officers, probation and parole officers, nurses, social workers, rec recreation staff, and so many others who help keep our communities safe. As a member of Parliament representing Carleton and as part of the Solicitor General's caucus advisory team, it was an honour to join the Solicitor General, my colleagues, and Ontario's Correctional Services staff as we paid tribute to those who have fallen in the line of duty at the 8th Annual Correctional Services Ceremony of Remembrance here at Queen's Park. I also had the opportunity last week to visit frontline personnel at the St. Lawrence Valley Correctional and Treatment Centre in Brockville to learn firsthand about the challenges they experience in their day-to-day -day work keeping Ontarians safe, as well as all the positive work they are doing to support rehabilitation and treatment of inmates. Thank you to Superintendent Tracy Gunton, Deputy Guy Boucher, and Sergeant Tony Porterman, and all of the correctional staff at the St. Lawrence Valley Correctional and Treatment Centre for a very informative and helpful tour. Over the past several months, our government has made improvements at adult correctional facilities across the province, including better health and wellness supports for correctional officers. On behalf of our government and Premier Ford, I want to thank all correction staff across Ontario for your continued commitment to service, which protects our communities, stands up for victims, and holds criminals accountable. It's clear that you have our back, and you can rest assured that our government has your back. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Niagara Centre. Thank you, Speaker. I have a pile of letters here from a group of seniors who last week uh, held a demonstration at a uh, constituency office in Beamsville. After only eight minutes, they had the police called on them. And uh, these constituents were from ridings all across Niagara. Uh, they were also called, referred to as grannies later in the news. And, uh, Speaker, uh, I, I want to apologize. The member had a chance to apologize uh, on behalf of, uh, of his government, but I would like to apologize on behalf of the Legislative Assembly of Ontario for the way that they were treated. We serve citizens. Our offices belong to the taxpayers. All constituents should feel free to meet and to demonstrate without having the police called on them. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Whitby. Uh, thank you, Speaker. The Brooklyn Spring Fair, a great annual event held each year, starts May 30th and continues to June 2nd. And, Speaker, there's over 200 fairs held in rural Ontario each year, and the 108-year uh, tradition of the Brooklyn Spring Fair speaks volumes about how significant the fair continues to be today for residents uh, in Whitby. Uh, Speaker, the Brooklyn Spring Fair is viewed as the gateway to spring celebrating agriculture with its livestock, its local fresh farm products displays, rodeos, and so much more. Speaker, over 30,000 people annually now pass through the original stone gateway on Winchester Road to attend the fair, reaffirming the importance and value of agriculture in Brooklyn. Speaker, I wish Kristen Williamson, the president of the Brooklyn Agricultural Society, 
her incredible board of directors and army of volunteers every success this year and in the years to come. My grandchildren and I look forward to once again attending the fair and seeing how agriculture and agriculture business positively impacts Whitby and, Speaker, all communities in the region of Durham. Thank you, Speaker. The member for Ottawa Centre. Thank you, Speaker. I'm very proud to rise today inspired by women in our country who fought for choice and for women's reproductive freedom. Speaker, when I became a community organizer and I started in this city, I learned from organizers like Carolyn Egan, Michelle Robidoux, and Judy Rebick. Judy, who once saved Dr. Henry Morgenthaler from an intolerant wielding garden shears who tried to attack Dr. Morgenthaler. Decades of Canadians have struggled to ensure women have bodily autonomy and access to reproductive freedom. And I want to make sure that this government knows that any attempts to roll those freedoms back will be fought vigorously by this opposition caucus. I know back home, Speaker, grassroots pro-choice organizations where I live have fought hard to ensure there's a bubble zone around abortion clinics. And I want to make sure that people at home know that if you see those bubble zones compromised in any way, if you're taunted or harassed on the way to getting access to your abortion services, call our office at 613-722-6414. We will respond swiftly and promptly. Because at the end of the day, Speaker, the women I had the great pleasure to learn from have burned into my mind as a man who allies with them, that not the church, not the state, women will decide their fate. And if this province believes in human rights, we will never roll those rights back. Thank you, Speaker. Member statements. The member for Ottawa, Vanier. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Saturday, May 12th, I had the opportunity to participate in the fifth uh, Sapphire Night. This is the eve, on the eve of Mother's Day, and it invites Francophone women to celebrate their accomplishments. I invited my mother, or my mother came. She's 99, and she's always happy to participate. We honored women as well as their contributions in communities. The theme of this year was looking towards the future, acknowledging the place of women in this new world. I would like to take this opportunity to congratulate the winners and those who won prizes for their com community invol involvement. Linda Sabao for professional work and the Woman of the Year, Joanne Lacan. I had the opportunity to speak with the Yasmin, the young woman who won the prize, and she is extremely eloquent with respect to how young people could contribute to Francophone affairs in Ontario. I would like to underline the fact that it's important to support Francophones in Ontario, not only to celebrate their ambitions and their accomplishments, as well as their aspirations for the future, but we also must underline the con contribution of those who simply love the French language. And to this effect, I'm very concerned about cuts to French immersion programs. Thank you very much. Next, we have the member for Hastings, Lennox, and Addington. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. It used to be that uh, death and taxes were the only certainties in life. Now it's a trio. Death, taxes, and debt. And government debt makes the other two even worse. Here in this chamber, we must talk about debt openly, because it was here in this chamber that we were repeatedly sold decisions that were both wrong and wrong-headed. Those irresponsible decisions turned Ontario into the most indebted sub-nation state in the world. Well, it's time to stop talking. We all have to admit the danger of the situation faced by all of us here from all parties. The debt hanging over Ontario threatens our very civilization. The Ontario built carefully by industrious generations of natives and immigrants since 1784 the ones who made it a place to stand and a place to grow. Debt isn't a word, it's a sentence. And we must get our debt under control or it'll be a life sentence for all the generations that succeed us. And that is not a political statement, Mr. Speaker. 
It's a fact that we as parliamentarians must face that responsibility. Member statements. The member for Parkdale High Park. Thank you, Speaker. Members of this House have likely ordered food using an app on their phone. One such company that provides this service here in Ontario is the international app giant Foodora. It has come to light that Foodora has been systematically exploiting its workers and underpaying them. In fact, recent reports show that Foodora owes nearly eight million dollars in unpaid wages. That's eight million dollars that the company has stolen from its workers. They are part of what is known as the gig economy. Economy, where companies like Fedora intentionally misclassify workers as independent contractors instead of employees so that they can get away with not providing the most basic labour protections, such as sick days, vacation pay, employment insurance, and puts the onus of paying for necessary items like cell phone data on workers. These companies want to keep workers fragmented, make it hard for them to organise and collectively push for basic workers' rights. Why? also that they can pay less and profit more. They want to keep workers precarious. Speaker, we know precarious work contributes to poor health outcomes, both physical and mental. Precarious work keeps workers in poverty, living in fear and worry of not being able to make ends meet, or what should happen should they get sick or get injured. But not anymore, Speaker. Fedora couriers are fighting, fighting to unionize and win a $15 minimum wage and workplace fairness. I am proud to stand in solidarity for justice for Fedora couriers, to challenge workplace precarity, and to demand from Fedora for their workers what every Ontarian deserves respect, health and safety protections, and fair compensation from a company that's profiting off their hard work. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Richmond Hill. Mr. Speaker, this weekend I was pleased to visit local organization in my riding who participated in Door Opened Richmond Hill. It is an event that supports cultural sites in the community to open their doors to everyone. This free e event is part of Doors Open Ontario, launched in 2002 by the Ontario Heritage Trust. It is amazing to discover the heritage, architecture, and culture Richmond Hill has to offer. I would like to thank the 15 featured sites that opened their doors to the residents of Richmond Hill. Each site featured a different experience that the whole family could enjoy. There were tours, activities, and demonstrations of weaving, spinning, pottery making, quilting, and we have seen very amazing um, arts and crafts, and also the artifacts from previous years. Children activities included indigenous games, pottery, amending, and scavenger hunts, all free. I would like to thank all the volunteers who worked tirelessly behind the scenes to put this special day together. Your hard work and countless hours you spend behind the scene have made Richmond Hill one of the most vibrant places to live and grow in Ontario. Thank you. Member statements. <laughs> Member for Mississauga Centre. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. <clears throat> May is National Food Allergy and Anaphylaxis Month. I am pleased to rise today to recognize the efforts of the Canadian Anaphylaxis Initiative and to thank Debbie Bruce from my riding of Mississauga Centre for being a passionate advocate for this cause. Anaphylaxis is a serious allergic reaction that can be life-threatening and is most often triggered by food, insects, or medication. Certain people are more at risk than others, especially if they have asthma or have experienced a reaction in the past. Being at risk of severe allergic reactions requires individuals to always be conscious of what's around them, because even the smallest contact with an allergen can cause a life-threatening scenario where every minute counts. That is why it is critical for anaphylactic individuals and those around them to be prepared by having an EpiPen on hand and being trained in its proper administration. That was the intention of Sabrina's Law, introduced by our former speaker, Dave Levac. Its goal was to save students' lives by ensuring that all school boards have policies in place to address food allergies in, in schools. Speaker, more than 2.8 million Canadians are affected by some form of anaphylaxis, and the month of May reminds us that we have a responsibility to know how to recognize an allergic reaction and how to respond. We must all do our part. 
That is why I am so pleased to see that the Toronto Blue Jays uh, are providing peanut and nut reduced zones during the month of May at their games, including during the weekend of May 24th to the 26th. This May, let's all join together in support of our allergic friends, family members, students and colleagues by learning how to recognize the early signs of a reaction and how to administer an EpiPen. It's as simple as this. Blue to the sky, orange to the thigh, and call 911. Thank you so much, Speaker. That concludes our member statements for this afternoon. Next, we have reports by committees, and I recognize